uh, what you have seen today are commitments to spend more in two areas. We're already spending more, as you know, on the National Health Service. Uh, we're spending more on defence. But today we announced four billion more for schools and we've made clear where that's coming from. And we've announced additional resources for social care. Um, for right. the first time to make sorry, ease the pressure on the NHS. I'm so sorry, you've also announced additional resources for the industrial strategy and for R&D spending, haven't you? We have, but the two big areas today are schools okay. and uh, social care. And so and the those costings are... document that sets out the costs and whether this is all going to work, is that coming later or...? Did well, I miss it, or is it in the, online somewhere? No, you haven't missed it. Um, some of these things, of course, <laughs> will depend on uh, the level, for example, we will consult on the level of the means test by which wealthier right. people will be asked to surrender the winter fuel allowance. Uh, so some of the detail is still to be consulted on, as you'd expect. OK. On the immigration pledge to get immigration down, have you costed that one? Has, has someone done some work and said, this is how much it will cost the exchequer? Because my understanding is the... Office for Budget Responsibility thinks cutting migration does cost the Exchequer. Have you, have you guys costed that proposal? Uh, there, there's been various academic work done on the, on the cost of uh, immigration. We've made it clear that we accept there is a cost and we want to make sure that uh, British companies uh, uh, do right. contribute to the training of British workers when they want to and, fill that post. And we've and set so out how the much, details sorry, how much? Sorry to interrupt, I know you, you haven't much time. How much... Is it going to cost the Exchequer to get immigration down by two thirds from its current level? Well, we haven't set out uh, a you know formulation of the you haven't? exact. We haven't set out the formulation of how much it will reduce by each uh, year. What we've set out is our ambition to continue to bear down right. on Sorry, immigration. Sorry, it is a policy to get immigration down to tens of thousands, isn't it, or is it not? It's our ambition to get it down to Is it a policy to get immigration... I'm so sorry, is it not a policy to get it's, immigration down? It's an down? ambition, and we've had it in previous manifestos. Oh, hang on, what's the difference between an ambition and a policy? I mean, you've had it in previous manifestos and you've palpably not delivered it, so well, I have our, assumed it's... by repeating it that there was some meaning to it this time. Well, it's our aim to continue to bear down on immigration, right. and, of course, for the first time, this is going to become easier as we leave the European Union. There will be no further entitlement to freedom of movement. At the moment, it's unlimited. Anybody in Bulgaria yeah. or Lithuania well, can up sticks on, we, and we, come we here. We know you were nowhere near it, even on the overseas people, even if we disregarded all the EU immigrants, you were nowhere near it. Right, so it no, is something not, we can right. expect that's you to deliver. Right. It is right. an aim, and it is an aim, and you are going to deliver it, correct? It, it is an aim, and we intend to continue to, uh, aim, to aim to reduce uh, the level of immigration, as we've set out. So, Michael, this is sounding a little bit weak, if I may say. So, I thought your policy was to get immigration down to the tens of thousands. It, does, it sounds like it isn't your policy at all. It is. It's our aim. I've said that. Right. It's in our okay. manifesto. Well, if you've said we, it, you've just now repeated... We want to get it done. Right, OK. And we will get now, it done. have you costed that proposal? That's my point. You've blamed Labour for not costing all theirs. Now, have you costed that proposal, because the OBR says it will cost money. Well, you need to cost proposals where you're proposing to spend billions of pounds in implementing But this them. is going to cost like, billions of pounds. No, it isn't going to cost billions of pounds. But that's what the OBR says. What, what, no, the, but how the, do you know it's not going to if you haven't costed it? No, the OBR doesn't say it's going to cost billions of pounds, with great well, respect. Now, if you're going to nationalise an industry, clearly there's going to be an enormous cost to that, and we're entitled to no, ask what that cost the is. The OBR... We are I'm, going to start controlling... So sorry. I just want to correct properly. you. We're going to manage properly the number of people coming into this country. The OBR models different migration scenarios and there are billions of pounds of national income difference between those models and that translates to billions of pounds of exchequer difference between those different migration assumptions. But I put it again to you. Have you costed the proposal to get immigration down by two-thirds from its current level? No, we've not costed because we okay. don't know specifically what year we're going to reach that point of reducing to exactly tens of thousands. But we've this... set out today, and you keep interrupting me, we've set out today the additional charge we're going to impose on British companies when they are uh, uh, employing uh, other workers where British people could be taking mm. those jobs. So we will be, we will be uh, ensuring that there is, uh, there is some payment towards those costs. It sounds like a pledge made in the morning is, is, is turned into to a somewhat vague aim that doesn't need costing uh, by the afternoon. Could we move on to another area, the industrial strategy? Because it, Theresa May said it is the party's aim to make us more prosperous. No one's going to uh, quibble with that. The thing that is going to do that is the industrial strategy. Now, can you just in a sentence say what the industrial strategy is? You have a few pages on it. I, 
was troubled to, to sort of myself boil it down to, to, to what, is, what is at the centre of it. What do you see as the heart of the industrial strategy? Well, we've set out, actually, our industrial strategy in other documents and we've been consulting on it. It's, uh, it's a policy of reviving our industries, particularly in, uh, in regions outside London, and ensuring we have the skills base and the focus on the new technologies that will strengthen our economy and ensure that we continue to earn our place in the world. And it covers everything from uh, shipbuilding to investment in, uh, in digital uh, and, uh, and a revival what, through our city deals what is the, of the relationship between central government and the mayors in the regions. What is the actual policy, though? You, you've, you've outlined the objective, and I understand the objective. What is the tool that is going to revive, without very much money, because you've said it's not going to be much money, what is the tool that is going to actually deliver a new industrial strategy or new industries or revived industries in those, in those areas? Well, one of the principal tools is the way and there's the relationship, as I said, between central government and local government. For the first time, empowering particularly the mayors in their regions, but also the cities of our country, empowering them with local budgets so that they can prioritise in their own areas and make the choices that are needed between improving the infrastructure, between improving the right. human capital, um, and to decide which, uh, which of the uh, industries they want to see grow in their particular areas and to focus on them. Now, that work has is already underway, we're consulting on the detail, but this is built around investment in the new technologies, a revival of manufacturing, and, uh, and an unerring emphasis on skills. OK. Now, can I ask you, changing the subject, would you say we've had strong and stable government for the last two years, since between this election and the last election? Well, we've had a relatively small majority uh, in uh, Parliament, and we've had to deal with the aftermath of the referendum result. Now, we need to get through implementing the referendum, and we need to get on beyond Brexit to build a stronger and fairer Britain. And that is why we need a stronger and more stable government for Theresa May to deal with both those challenges. Most, I think most people looking back over the last couple of years would consider it among the, the two most unstable years since the Second World War in the history of this country. And I, I just wonder why we should believe you when you say you're going to be strong and stable this time, as opposed to the coalition of chaos or whatever your slogan is, when you used the same formulation only two years ago before inaugurating two of the most unstable years that anyone can remember. Well, Theresa May made clear today when she launched the manifesto that the challenge of negotiating a successful exit from the European Union is one of the biggest and most difficult things any government has been is doing in this country since the Second World War. And to do that, you do need stable leadership. You do need strong government uh, back here at home. And that is why she is requesting this fresh mandate from the British people but that will enable her not just to do that, but to go beyond Brexit and build a stronger, uh, fairer Britain that can earn its place in the world. Sir Michael Fallon, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.